Welcome, Eta. Um, chapeau bas pour, pour film ça. Um, uh, thank you for sharing this uh, beautiful and um, uh, very important film uh, with us. And I think um, you've described it as a, a tool to discuss um, wider issues. Um, and perhaps uh, people feel free, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box, or if you want me to unmute you, I can as well, if you want to talk to you uh, directly. Um, so um, to begin with, um, uh, I know um, uh, some people kind of um, have described the Madan Sahel or the roots of this, this term um, coming from a migratory bird that travels from place to place. Um, and obviously in the, the film you reference this um, his history of spaces of resistance on the margins of the, the plantation. And so I was wondering if you could say something about um, strategies of mobility and movement as um, key to the ingenuity and the resourcefulness of the Madan Zara. Um, and maybe about how the, this sort of impact of the sh shifts in the commercial chain, so the, um, um, the influence of, um, or how these have become transnationally rooted and um, the impact of, of imports, importation. Um. Okay, this is a lot. I <laughs> um, Thank you for having me. Um, um, I think the, um, uh, yeah, the name of Manasara is the name of the, mag, mag, the the bird. This is how this is where the name uh, you know where the name came from. I'm glad you mentioned that because I get asked a lot of questions about about it. So so far, what we know this is what we know about where the name exactly came from. Um, I, I think uh, yeah, as you were talking about uh, doing you know slavery and Saint-Domingue, he was you know the French. Um, uh, separated uh, the men and the women on who do what um, to make sure that they have, they maintain control over the colony. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that we don't see in, in most, you know, Haiti history is like the contribution of, 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 of those women because they, they did also help and participate of, of, uh, of helping a lot of uh, men that were escaping escape. It wasn't, it weren't just like just that. It also, I mean, they keep them alive too, where they were living uh, as a Mawun. Um, I hopefully there will be more stories and that will come out um, in the near future about their contribution, about how they 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 change, um, you know, course of history by by uh, being brave. Um, I I uh, Madame Sarah, uh, you know, is a. It's like it's like the way you see in the film. It's like a form of resistance. It's like they're still there, trying to do their thing, trying to work, trying to survive every single day despite all the odds. And uh, importation is a major problem for them. Import, uh, you know, neoliberal policies affected Haiti a lot, but especially the agricultural sector and Manasa. So they are uh, still here. They are still fighting, but they are. Um, you know, in the front line, and they are victims of uh, of uh, so you know decades of of neoliberal policies, and also decades of of, of bad uh, governance. Also, because uh, as you can see in the film, um, there is a at, at the local level there is a lot of insecurity, and there is no uh, you know there is we don't have a, a system of protection for uh, for for the Manasara. So. I I'm, I'm glad we were able to create this uh, this piece this document for people to, um, you know, look at the, look at the problem, but also do something about it. So I hope um, when people see the film, they will think and 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 do something about the 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 insecurity, the violence, and. Uh, Maybe one day we will have a better network of Manasa that will be more equipped and that will be protected. Thank you. Uh, Sh Charlotte, do you want to read out? There are some comments in the Q&A, actually, which have come from three three colleagues. Can you see the Q&A? Uh, 
Yes, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, sorry, uh, Etan. So there's one from uh, Vicky's. He says one of Clotilde's sons is working and it's a trade school in the Dominican Republic. But as uh, I understand it, the DR has refused to recognize the rights of migrant Haitians and they live a precarious life without documentation or protection. As this impacted many other Madame Sara women. I am muted. Um, I, I think, uh, could, I mean, closed closed kids attend the DR. They are they are studying and living there legally. So they have a there is a big uh, because of the lack of universities in Haiti. The DR is a big market, and they are depending on it because it's a lot of money. They they make a lot of money off Haitian students in the DR. So. They yes they they I, I I they suffer discrimination. I suffer discrimination when I when I'm in the DR. I so the way they treat Haitian. Um, I, I I'm assuming um, that this is the same situation for them. Uh, but in general, I think it's uh, the uh, her son, her kids live there legally and they go to school. It's studying normally, so they will be less likely to be harassed for documentation. Because uh, this is also a big market for the Dominican Republic, uh, because it's like it's uh, um, hundreds of millions of dollars that cross the border from Haiti to the DR to pay for university, to pay for housing, to pay for school, and they know it's a, it's a lot of money. So um, yes, they 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 are um, they are doing a lot of shitty things to Haitian there, but they know this is they depend also on that money. Mm. Great, thank you. And so there's a, um, a comment here from um, Vicky as well, saying that it's very painful to know that markets are the target of such devastating violence. Is it possible to help us understand more? So I guess maybe struck by the the market, um, the markets as the target. Here. Yeah, I think I don't I, I don't understand it either, to be honest with you, mm. uh, because this is a practice that, like you know. Um, I think it's keep on happening because of uh, the culture of impunity that we have around uh, in the country, in this country. And this is part of the structural violence against women. That's what I would, that's what I always, that's what I think. Um, yeah, there's no, there's never like a government, uh, um, you know, investigation. There's never like, you know, um, a good investigation that lead up to some convictions. It's, it's keep on happening and happening. So I think, I feel like it's complete impunity and neglect. And like Kami mentioned mentioned in the film, it's 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 the way the 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 way the government is 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 treating Marasara, the whole sector is the same. It's a repetition. It's reflecting on how they they uh, they uh, govern the the country as a whole. Um, yeah, I think it's 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 embarrassing. I think it's shameful, and I think I and I think uh, this is one of the reasons that I put uh, so much time to on that sequence because this is something that we have to face head on and find solution um, for it because it's it just doesn't make any sense. You want to say anything about the connection with with gang related violence in the markets? I mean that's. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, the the gang part. Uh, it's 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 this. It's almost the same thing. It's the the gang take over because the government is neglect they're not doing their job or they or they don't care um the gang situation is is really bad and uh, as we speak right now it's still a major problem in haiti but it is part of the larger problem which is the government uh, the state not the not just a government the state uh don't don't really care about about hundreds of thousands of business women who's waking up every single day to go uh uh, trying to build a, a better future for a new generation. Great, thank you, uh, Ida. So there's another question here from Victoria. So um, uh, Edwige Dantika briefly mentioned water vendors during a story about being raised by a community of Haitian women. They also had the issue uh, when there was no water to put out the fire. Uh, what, what's, uh, Victoria asked, what is the water availability like in Haiti and what is causing these issues? The local, the, the local authorities, um, they're not well equipped to deal with these type of fires. 
So like someone mentioned in the film, he was the fire truck from a different commune in Haiti that came to help them. And they lost most of the staff by the time in between because, uh, you know, the, the fire department and the, in that area had no water at the time when it happened. So it is, it is, it is, it is a big problem because, uh, you know, the, I don't think it's, I don't think they are, they haven't, even though it's something that's keep on happening, I don't think they're doing a good job to like stop it. Um, I don't think also they are trying to equip themselves to be able to deal with it. So this is a uh, part of the neglectful of, uh, of, of, of the, of the state against the, you know, when it's come to to protecting uh, a whole part of the informal sector of the economy, um, I I uh, the, they, they, I think there's a water uh, crisis in Haiti. I think uh, it's not only Haiti. We all have, you know the whole world is affected by climate change right now. With climate mig- migration, you have a lot of you have a lot of issues. Like today in Port-au-Prince, we have. Um, over two million million people. Some people even say three million people um, in in an area that was built for for uh, probably you know not even half of that people. So you will have a water crisis. Um, and Haiti is one of the one of the top three countries. I think it's not the the country that mostly affected by 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 climate change. And uh, the what the water crisis is very serious in Haiti. Thank you. Um, can I ask about the um, production of the, of the film a little bit? Um, well, firstly, um, it's on how you met the women who feature in the film and how you engage them in the project and also the sort of film process. So did you become friends with the Mada Saga first of all? And then at what point did you start to introduce the camera and how was your experience of of that, I, I used to leave uh, um, my house in 2015. My house uh, was like a couple of minutes um, next to the market uh, where Clotilde sell her goods. Um, we, for, yeah, we yeah, we did become friends. I used to go to the market to buy goods from her, so this is how we know each other. Um, yeah, and I told I told her about what I wanted to do about the film. I share an article that I wrote um, with her about Manasara, and then she was con- convinced and and she wanted to participate. Uh, um, yes, we become friends first, and then this is she was very 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 calm and cool about it. I was very lucky to do to do that to to have her agree agreeing with me to be part of it. Um, it was almost the same process with with uh, Madame Monique. She, we become friends first, and I, I had a lot of uh, a lot of material that I was I was uh, like when we met, uh, and I I all I had to do was to show her uh, you know what I was doing the the trailer that I was the way I wanted to put the trailer together and and she invited me to her house and we sit down and and, and talk so it was a it was a long process it, the the whole thing it took me like five years to put it together even though there was there was like some ups and down. But he was, uh, he was, he, he was. I had a friendly relationship with them, and this is how I managed to have them to trust me to to be able to tell their stories. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so there's a comment from Chile in the 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 Q and A there about uh, wondering which year the film was produced, and and so it's newly released this year, right? Yeah, the film came out. Came the, the film came out last year, October twenty fifth, year in Port au Prince. Um, uh, we did the premiere. I mean, because of the pandemic, we had to postpone. Um, but uh, yeah, the, like for example, the the two interviews of Clotilde and uh, Clotilde that we've seen, like the first one and the last one, I think they're like four years apart. So um, yeah, yeah. So one is in 2015 and one is in 20, 2019. Okay. Charlotte, can I ask a question, uh, uh, Um First of all, I just want to say that a lot of people have been writing in the chat box saying what a wonderful film it is and such an insightful movie. So there's a lot of 
comments to that, to that effect, and I would agree with that. I would only have a couple of questions because I'm a specialist on uh, basically development, especially relating to Africa. And one of the transformative things that has happened in a lot of African markets over the last 25 years has been the introduction of the mobile phone, right? And it basically allowed women to, and, and cattle herders and everything to know the price of goods before they sold them. Do you get a sense in which technology has helped these women better sell their goods. And then just a quick follow-up question as well. Uh, there, would, there seems to be a hierarchy in terms of these sellers of goods. So there's the Madan Sara, but there are also the, um, the street vendors, you know? She, 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 was, she wasn't a, a Madan Sara, she was only a street vendor. So presumably there is, and then there seem to be people who are asked to load up the the goods and they get paid, I don't know, 50 gourdes for doing that. So is there a hierarchy within the, the, as well as it being solidarity, is there actually a kind of hierarchy there in that community? Um, I, uh, I, uh, I think, I, I, wait, sorry. Okay, the, 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 I think, uh, Yes, there is a different type of Madasa. You have a you have Madas. A Madasa is someone who's uh, traveling from places to places, taking goods from one place and bringing it to another place. So they like the network is like it's a distribution network. So, but at the same time, you will find Madasa was like a, it's a family business. Like if it's the the if they have the businesses, they will bring it to the market. They will also sell it. Um, but you have also some Madasa was like also selling uh, the goods. They just they 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 travel and they 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 operate also in the market as the seller. So you have uh, you have that um, the people who's like you know helping around you know um, helping carrying stuff. That this is a different. This is the dependently from the Manasa. This is that you know most these are like mostly men. They will hire to like you know carry you know some heavy stuff for them um, at the market. Um, um, but I mean, the Manasa also carried, you know, very, very heavy stuff. So had, I had my, my fair share of experience helping them carry, you will be surprised uh, to, to know, like, you know, how heavy are these stuff. Um, I, uh, I, uh, yes, um, I, uh, in terms of, I believe like technology can play a very, very important role um, on helping the Manasa the, just not only modernizing the market, but also be able to sell more goods and sell more stuff. Um, I, I, they, I, I think there, there, there are people who's working on some some type of projects like this. I'm not quite sure um, wh- how far they, they made it, but I, but also I know that they, they are like uh, sell service that offer you know money transfer uh, situation for like you know for Manasara and for other people. So I think. Uh, it's called. I think it's called more cash. I think this service is 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 around, but I think uh, more needs to be done. To be honest with you, and uh, it not only I think yes, technology can help, but uh, we need uh, um, policies that uh, that are intentional uh, with the goal on helping helping uh, um, these women who's working really really hard and who's like uh, you know being victims uh, day and night. With market fired, with you know, in other situation. Thank you, Charlotte. You want to? Um, there's a question in the Q and A um, from uh, Sophie. Um, he's asking. Um, she says, "I'm sorry, I missed the start of his documentary connection issues, but did Maran Sara exist, or did the equivalent movements exist under the Aristide?" mandate and if so did they have an easier time to operate due to the pushback against neoliberal policies imposed via the different structural adjustment programs okay. yeah Madasa have been around for centuries so Madasa was part of the foundation of the, of the country so uh, yeah they, they have been under like every you know every president every every person uh, that uh, lead this country. 
Um, if they had a uh, if they had a better time on their RST than t- because of the policies, I it's it's hard for me to tell. But what I can tell you for sure is like uh, what Madansa was uh, 10, 15 years ago. It's not the same thing today. Today is really really hard. It's harder. It's hard, really it's way harder than it was. And this is the sense that I get from my conversation with them. And uh, like I mean, Monique said it in the in the in the film. Like you. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you could have started business, started a business with like, um, uh, more, like five thousand goods. Today, you probably need ten thousand. Mm-hmm. So, I will imagine uh, today things are extremely harder in comparison to like 15, 20 years ago. Great, thank you. Um, can I, can, I, can I ask you, Charlotte, just uh, obviously it's a very risky job and you saw a lot of these women, uh, they had, you know, they, they had lost everything and so on. So how many, how long would you have to be in the business to be secure and perhaps to have some savings aside? And if you did have some savings, so that if all your goods get burnt down in a fire, so that you've not lost absolutely everything. And if you do have money, which you set aside, where do you put that money? Do you put it into a bank? Do you keep it in your house? If inflation is running at a high rate, that money will lose value as well. So what do these women do to you know, guard against the worst happening in the legs of a fire. I think I think uh, Dominique sum it sum it up the, the you know clearly you know sometimes you know these people they lost everything in the fire. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they have you know sometimes they go back and 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 you know they, to they go back they go uh, with like more debt really quickly mm-hmm. um, because they lost everything. Um, some of them, um, I think it's it's very likely some of them have some savings, but it's a it's a very informal sector. Um, it's mostly cash, um, and uh, and there is no system of, of 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 protection organization for for them. So which make it harder and harder for them to uh, you know to have support. They don't have like insurance. Most of they got, I don't know they don't have insurance. They don't have a, a government program that protects them, so it's 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 a it's it's a very very hard situation for them. It's a very uh, tough field of work, uh, but this is one of the reasons that we made the film so we can you know move toward advocacy and protection because we we want to make sure that the the people in charge um, address this issue. Hopefully, the film will make a difference and. In the future. Thank you. I see, Chile, Chile has raised yeah. her hand. Um, I'm if you attempt to, yeah, yeah, sorry, if, yeah. If, if let me see. Oh, do all the dots. No, hold on. Actually, no. Say, oh, yeah. Answer live, I think. Yeah. Oh, to yeah. Talk. Okay. Chile, you should be able to. We should be able to hear you now if you want to ask your question. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, no, well, first of all, let me just say because I am in a neighboring country currently in the Bahamas. I um, this is something that's very close to home for me. So being able to have this type of insight is just disturbing. Um, and I'm just wondering because obviously um, from the top down there is an issue. How closer do you feel? You know things are to get to improving um, within the system, within the government. That's my first question. How, you know, how much closer do you think we, you are to getting, you know, relief and help? And then also, how do you feel, what, like what ways do you think um, can be, what can be done, what methods can be used to actually begin to see resolution. You know, we, we, you mentioned there needs to be policies, but who can do it when, you know, how can we fight to get it done? Um, do you need more outside help for the country to be able to fight and push? Is there, you know, is there any look for potential um, improvement within the government system to say how 
people in power that actually care about the country, care about the people, because to have this be a foundational part of, 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 of Haitian society and then be neglected like this for so many years is absolutely absurd to me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's as if you want, it's like a, another form of genocide. It's like you want to get rid of your people. And I, I just don't understand that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I hope my questions are still <laughs> on top of the mind. I don't want to go on too much. But can you just help me understand, like, I, I hate seeing things like this, and then you feel so completely powerless about it. Thank you. Thank you for your for your question. Uh, yeah, it's it is uh, revolting. So, I uh, you know I was I spent years on it. I can tell you, and I'm in Haiti right now as as we as we speak. Um, I think I think uh, I th this is the reason I'm, I'm in the film is because I I don't think I don't want us to get to I mean I, I in a personal level I don't want to you know I I I saw something I could do about it and I did it I put I put the film together so this is the first step number two what we're trying to do with the film is this film is being used uh, in ha around Haiti right now to have this conversation. Um, to how to to address these issues that you, that uh, that you, you that you mentioned, um, we have a, a collaboration with uh, like I think it's seven or eight feminist organization in Haiti who's playing the film all over Haiti right now. Um, one of the thing uh, that uh, that if you can do is if you can support the feminist movement in Haiti in any ways possible, any organization, any shape or form. Um, you should that that something that can help because they are they are very much involved and they're working very very hard to push uh, you know equality to fight against uh, against injustice and I think this is a good way to also help um, and I mean ultimately I think the goal is to see how um, we can build a movement around this message to demand change to force change. Because we know uh, people have to uh, to push and push and become uh, um, in charge of their own destiny. Because that's the only way to that you will be able to affect change. That the, that's the only way you will be able to change stuff. Um, I uh, it is revolting. It is very sad. It is uh, it is uh, very concerning. But it's I don't I don't think uh, today in Haiti as we speak the situation is very bad it's worse and it's uh it matters uh, they are having a very bad time and Haitian women in general i mean i think uh, 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 going through a lot right now um I, I, but that doesn't mean we have to give up that, that we have to to do the work and we have to fight back and 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 find the right formula to get rid of of, of all type of oppression um all type of especially all type of systemic oppression against women, against minorities, uh, um, to, because we, because uh, um, to quote Edwidge Jansika in the film, I, she don't, I don't believe like we will be able to move the country forward if we, if we keep on oppressing half the population. Um, it does, just doesn't make sense. I think we have to do the work and, uh, and, and, the, and I hope everybody is doing their part. And uh, I, I, I try to do something, I hope, um, uh, we will get some results soon in terms of like helping people to organize and mobilize around the country to demand uh, ch uh, changes. And uh, also, or the other thing is, we are working to put uh, the name of a couple of uh, organizations in Haiti you know, on a website uh, that people can connect with and can help. So, um, you can look at, we don't have it up there yet, but we will look out for it. It's uh, and you can visit our website. It's madasarafilm.com, madasarafilm.com. Yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to put some uh, links to organizations, but I think it may be best to, to access madasarafilm um, to see can, those. Can I draw a, a, a parallel there? I mean, Many years ago, I, I used to uh, work in with a, a lady who was a specialist on Mozambique, and she uh, started. She actually started a movement there to work, uh, help women 
in the marketplace. It was nothing to do with her job and she got into a lot of trouble for doing it actually, because she was a civil servant at the time. But there was a reason in the African context for that. And that was that um, effectively the women were really the ones doing all the work in the society and they were doing, you know, really the the workers, they were the producers, they were bringing up the children and so on and so forth. So what I'm, I'm wondering about is I can see that the origins of the Mada and Sara came out of slavery. But what I'm wondering about now is, do men not try to become Mada and Sara or is this an exclusively women's role? Uh, because I, I'm looking at it from a non-Haitian perspective. I'm just wondering, is this a purely female thing? Because the role that they're playing could equally be done by men now. Yes, I, I think, I think I, it's not um, exclusively for women. Oh, okay. Women just do, do most of the work, which is... Um, which is uh, um, pretty sad. It's not, I mean, I don't think it's only in the African countries or places mm -hmm. like Haiti that women do most of the work. So yeah. I think it's, it's almost like all over the world. It's, not, it's um, all over the world. It is. It's all over the world. I mean, we, and the, I mean, the, I, the patriarchy is still strong despite all the, all the um, uh, mass movement, mass, uh, no demands, despite the growing of, 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 of feminist movement, the patriarchy is still strong. There's, we have a long, a long, a long way to go uh, to to get to uh, um, equality. Uh, uh, I think I think uh, I'm very, I'm optimistic, and I I'm glad uh, me and uh, other people. Uh, people who support Manasara, people who like, you know, it's like the producers, all the people we managed to put this uh, document together. Um, and we hopefully uh, something will, will, will happen. Uh, uh, you know, people will, some people will decide to organize and do it for themselves because we know it's not my, you know, I, I made the film, but other people will have to do their part. And I, I believe something will happen. So um, I'm very optimistic. For me, the greatest contrast in the film was between the Mada and Sara, who are incredibly hardworking, effective, and brilliant at what they do, and everything else, which isn't working, basically. The fire brigade isn't working, the government isn't working, uh, you know, there doesn't seem to be water, and so on. They are the, they are, I mean, the, the economist at the end talks about, you've got to bring the Mada and Sara, the youth, the artists and some other group together, and I and I think that that is that is the key, is letting them get on with it and prevent not preventing them from doing it, and that that seems to be the government's role is getting in the way actually. <laughs> you possibly can't comment. <laughs> the, oh, Another question from oh, yep. Sof Sophie in the, the, the chat, this time about the um, uh, Marasara during the Duvalier dictatorship, which I think Camille talks about, uh, mentions in the film. Um, so she wants to know, if, did they have to negotiate with the Makut? Uh, were there market fires also happening during this period? I don't know if you... On, on, I mean, under, uh, I mean, we, we went through 30 years of dictatorship with Duvalier, um, um, both father and son, he was a, a um, he was a moment of terror for every Haitian, especially Haitian who there to like you know do do uh, something that the regime uh, thinks is not you know it's not good in their opinion. Um, I, I I believe um, the the the, the, the during the dictatorship period like on on the Duvalier things were like really really bad for Manasa things were like really really because you are there was no uh, not a place where you can you know um, call um, a makut or, or a soldier if they attack you if, you, if you, they burn your stuff I think it's it, it's 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 it was a it, Duvalier was a you know it was a regime of a regime of terror and I feel like I think it's 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 a uh, it's clear that uh, uh, you know this is not new. With the the markets, what's happening right now, what's happening uh, two years ago, they, it's not new. It's deeply rooted to to a system that uh, of of oppression, which Duvalier uh, in part helped 
and so you know create in Haiti. Okay, so um, I can't see any other questions. I don't know if Gordon, you can see anything else. You're muted, but it's fine. Yeah. So. No, that's just a thank you. So that's, yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, thank you so much, Edda, for sharing uh, this fantastic film with us. And I think we've all, we've all learned a lot uh, from the film. Um, I mean, I guess looking forward, so the best place to, to check back is the Mara Saga uh, website that you mentioned. Uh, will the film be available for streaming eventually? Oh, you're muted, Edda. Probably one day the film will be available for for, uh, for sh streaming. But right now, um, one of the reasons I'm in Haiti right now is uh, we're working on our, uh, on our May schedule screenings. We're going to have like a, a tour um, in, in May to show the film. We're inviting you to visit madasafim.com. We are also inviting you to support uh, our public screenings in Haiti because we actually try, try, we are trying to raise funds to be able to host free public screenings in Haiti. So... If you can support, go to madasagafilm.com, support uh, or, or effort. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we I think we have, uh, you know, May is a very active month because we have a uh, Fête de l'Agriculture. Um, and May 1st, we have Mother's Day, the last Sunday of May. So yeah, and visit the website. We 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 post uh, all the, all those, most of our screenings on, on the website. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Stay in you can follow us in, on Facebook, Manasa IT, Manasa IT on Twitter, on Facebook, and Manasa Film on, on Instagram, and to stay in touch with, you know, where Manasa are going to play next. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Merci un peu later. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, this evening, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, right, thank you. Bye-bye.